It's time to answer the call, little buddy. I'm talking about big beef, dislocate your jaw kind of wide. This, that, charbroiled unicorn boy, bacon, big pig, slab, cut thick, sizzling for shizzling on velvet sheets of ooey gooey. Ooh, a wild, wild western bacon cheeseburger. Carl Jr. I'm calling your name. Pick up. Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brousseau. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. I'll tell you what I want. As your host, John Fahey. What do you want, John? I want my high-functioning pervert. Oh, High-functioning pervert. pervert! Aaron Peter! That's me. Hi! A hypervert. A hypervert. Um, you have an advanced degree in hyperversion. I do. I am a doctor of hyperversion. <laughs> you, I, I believe you actually discovered hyperversion, yes, didn't you? Yes, wow. I have a hyperversion drive <laughs> in my basement. Yes. Uh, I think you have the internet? <laughs> yeah. Have this, yes. 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 It's a window to another dimension. That's what they do, like in Naughty Star Trek. Like, Naughty Star Trek. They're like set us into hyperversion. <laughs> uh, whoa, the hyperversion level six. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I, I want to see that Star Trek where, where it doesn't have any of those guys, and it's just like the perverts lounge. <laughs> I know, I know. The, the space parking. Yeah. Matt Rousseau, how are you? You're a co-host of the show. Oh, I am. It's great to be here. Thank Hi. You. Hi. 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 Um. So things are going pretty great. Oh, what for the show? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, the show. Yeah, Things yeah. are going pretty great. Uh, we're gonna do a little advertisement very soon that we're all very excited about. Some advertisement. Yes, and um, we uh, we're not bringing ads onto the show. No, just to no, 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 no. We're, we'll be doing an ad elsewhere. Uh, but we do have um over five hundred dollars in the in the uh, Patreon per month. Yes, right thank now, you, which is great. Thank yes. you guys. We have yet to see any of it. Thanks Patreon. Right. Uh but a but big thing It's my money. I want it now. Mm -hmm. I want it now. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> I want treat my money is like <sighs> like a high gravity log. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> I just love that Patreon knows that artists are used to not getting paid. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, oh, Dang, wait, make have wait a wait a month. Son of a bee. You fucking motherfucker, you fucking mother but, a big thank you to all the patrons mm -hmm. and to yeah. the non-patrons alike. Yes, uh, thank you to Joe Latchett that just made our new logo. Holy which is shit, incredible. the new logo Oof. that's going to be going out in sticker form first. Yeah, and the buttons will be the old logo. Right. And right. Uh, then we'll right. have, for the True Freaks of the Teak, we'll have the uh, I Freak of the Teak Do You t-shirts. Yes. Which uh, he just sent me the picture of the stacks of those today. Very, very so, cool. So um, that is very nice. Check, if you want to see what the stickers are going to look like, check out the Instagram. That'll be yes. up there. It's very, very deep. It's yes. layered. It's detailed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't follow the Instagram, do. It's just, uh, you know, we're at Profiles and Eccentricity. Um, not podcast or anything else. Just at Profiles and Eccentricity. But uh, you'll... Uh, You'll get a lot from the visuals of some of this stuff. Yeah, mm, you know? adds another dimension. Yeah, yeah. You, you're a, uh, you're crazy nun on the run. She was. Oh shit. She was as unattractive as you described. Yeah, it's a good painting. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. really, really good. Not hard to believe that she could have been a man. Yeah. yeah. Um. My uh. My aunt and my my nana mm -hmm. actually knew knew about her. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I didn't, but yeah, my uh, my grandma had like read her memoirs and stuff. No yeah, shit. Yeah, it doesn't take long. Was... No, well, <laughs> that book is not her memoir. That book is the, the, she she wrote another one. I think there's another book that is like a memoir and, and not the autobiography. Okay. I think yeah. there's like two different yeah, ones. Yeah, I think I remember seeing it. Oh, so, she did a satchel page on it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, yeah, she's one of those. I mean, seven sense. feet tall. Yeah. yeah she had yeah. a lot of time in church sanctuary. Yeah. So well, she, I mean, she's such a maniac. There would probably be a lot that she forgot. Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, later oh, like, yeah. I got a whole other I book. Forgot I forgot I killed I, my I, brother. <laughs> yeah, remember when I ransacked that village and killed every living human in it? <laughs> I got to write this down before <laughs> I forget again. Yeah. Which village was that? <laughs> yeah, where was that again? I don't know. So, yeah, they, uh. I did get laid. <laughs> <laughs> well, it uh, didn't for well, a very long time. Right. Um, Matt, you're starting us off with a little something, something. Oh, sure, sure. So, um, 
I mean, you know, I, I I bring a a, a lot of a weird musicians, you know. Yes. Uh, you know, there was a time in my life, let's say, ten years ago, where I was going back in history. I would just um, time travel. Mm -hmm. I was time travel, and because everybody, you know, when you're in high school and everybody's like, "Oh, I like all music except for country," or like, "I like yeah. all music except for," it just yeah, it just means that you haven't you have no taste. Yeah, it doesn't. It just means you're not opening yourself up to things. Sure. And you go back, and you don't. So maybe you don't like the pop country today. Go back. Keep right. going further and further back, and you will right. find something. Yes. You know? Um, and, you know, I was fascinated with the idea, like, how did music start? You know, Gregorian chants, and then they started mm. writing things down, and uh, books became, you know, people could learn to read. And then there's a whole process of things, you know, the American folk music. There's the, the mm. anthology of folk music where it's just people just, like, singing in fields until, you know, someone put a recorder around them. Mm -hmm. Or uh, R. is a great record out of a uh, company out of Berkeley. This guy named Chris Strakowitz would just go to Louisiana and just record people on their porch. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these guys playing uh, guitar or maybe some washboard stuff. You know, stuff you would hear if you lived there. Right. But if you didn't live there, you didn't even know it existed. Right. And so you go back and, and you, you find these things, and then some of them are just like, it's, there's a time and a place for it, I guess. But there's this guy named, Mer I, I was talking, my friend uh, Johnny was talking to this guy, and this guy's aunt was in um, the uh, 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 Bob Wills' Texas Playboys. Mm -hmm. So Bob Wills is like cowboy country guy, and he had a whole band, and they all wore the cowboy hats, and they had the, the, the pants, and they had vests, and there was a <laughs> whole thing, and they would just play cowboy country music, like real yeah. authentic old things. And it reminded me of this guy named Merle Travis. You ever hear of Merle Travis? No. Yeah. So Merle Travis is one of these guys, and he never got big, but among those cowboy country musicians, he was a known name, and, and he had a very successful career, so he would write songs for people, he'd play his own songs, and I was always stuck with these two songs of his, and one of them is called Smoke, Smoke, Smoke That Cigarette. Huh. And he said he never enjoyed cigarettes, but... Um, Here's this is him. here's a little ditty I made up for a buddy of mine named Tex Williams, and uh, we was lucky enough to have Capitol Records first. Tex Williams. <laughs> Jim knows how much I brag. It's another country music. <laughs> well, we country. was lucky enough to have Capitol Records first million seller. Who all remembers this old song? First Capitol Records million million seller. This wow. song. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Crowd loves it. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death, tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate, you hate to make him wait, but you've got to have another cigarette. Huh, it's ironic, because you're going to get a fellow with a heart of gold and yeah. the ways of a gentleman, I've been told. Kind of a guy that wouldn't even harm a flea. But if me and a certain character met, the guy that invented the cigarette, I'd murder the son of a gun in the first degree. Now, that ain't cause I don't smoke myself, and I don't reckon it'll hinder your health. I've smoked them all my life. I ain't dead yet. But Good the logic. steam slaves are all the same. At a petting party or a poker game, everything got to stop while they have a cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Mm -hmm. So this is great. Yeah. I do know this. You've probably heard the Tex Williams one because that was that was the big one. He wrote it with him. He's one of these guys. He's finger picking. He's got the little the, yeah. the metal on his fingers. I forget what it's called, but you know, that's him playing. Crazy. This is, I think that was from like a 1950 something like that. It's a really old. Super. I believe that's a jet. Uh, but. So I, I always enjoyed that song. You know, it's like you listen to those old camel cigarette commercials yeah. where, like, mm -hmm. four out of five doctors say camel's the smoothest cigarette around. Yeah. yeah and you're like, well, they can't lie. They're doctors. Right. Uh, but then he has this other song. Uh, it's called Fat Gal. Ooh. <laughs> this is... And I, I... For me, Merle Travis is both simultaneously ahead of and behind whatever time he's in. Right. Because if Tim and Eric did this, you'd be like, that is hilarious. Right. Eat, but, eat, eat that baguette. <laughs> that's... So this is Merle Travis with Fat Gal. She keeps me warm in the winter. <laughs> Shady in the summertime. <laughs> she blocks up like the sun. That fat gal of mine. When I see my landlord, there's so much of her to hide behind. <laughs> you wouldn't pay rent if your time was spent like mine. <laughs> She's my shelter in the time of storm. I held a skelter right under her arm. 
She's a beauty if you look at her face, and you shouldn't be looking any other place. Warm in the winter. Jesus Christ. It's great. Yeah. Right, it's, it is kind of fun. And then the, he has this line at the end. Let me see if I get this right. Now when she's tickled, so much of her has the biggest time. You wouldn't pay rent if your time was spent like mine. So much you heard to hide behind You wouldn't pay rent if your time was spent like mine This hard time talk don't trouble me I keep as happy as a honeybee If things get rough and times get hard I render my gal and sell the lard She's born I render my gal and sell the lard? Yeah, wow, dude. That's what you know, just your classic old family, family, family hey, ditty. You know, they, she pipes up and the, I slice <laughs> Fat off her and turn it into yeah. soap. Yeah, then I render her. Yes. <laughs> I might have to render you. <laughs> that sounds so insane. Come here, dear. <laughs> but, you know, just, uh, we need a line to finish this song, Merle. Oh, yeah, yeah what if I just uh, killed her and we sold her for parts? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Get it, because she's a big sow. <laughs> sure we do. Maybe he was talking about, um, maybe he was talking about a cow. You know? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. frame it that way. Sure. He was a cowboy countryman. Off. Hey. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a girl. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. <laughs> I like that stuff. a lot. I like that yeah, a lot. I think you're right, though, that there's a lot like, you know, you know when you say people say, like, oh, I don't like country or whatever. It's like, yeah, you do got to go back to what you, I told you after the show one time that one thing I wanted to know more about from your uh, kind of musical exploration stuff was where all of that blues and country and... Uh, everything intertwines and you were saying like porch music yeah mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and there's just and folk is in there everything's all coming from some kind of similar place eventually right. Right. yeah I mean I think that's something I might cover in my patreon one, one of these because just how how Dylan transformed f went from folk or folk into, into rock mm -hmm. because it's this great old Woody Guthrie Memorial concert where Odetta's playing uh, Pete Seeger's playing. There's all these classic folk musicians and and some blues people, and then Dylan comes in and basically takes all of that, and with with the band behind him, mm -hmm. churns out what be what would become rock music, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know we can go back to like Graham Parsons and and the Flying Burrito Brothers with with their with their pop, pop their folk country. Yeah. Uh, and how that became a big thing in the '70s. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, I uh, I do think there is something in every genre that's worth, worthwhile yeah. for sure. You know, absolutely. It's always weird though. I don't like when people people talk about uh, you know country and western. I don't know what western is. <laughs> no, it's like rhythm and blues, right? It, it, but it's, it's just, one you, genre. You just mean blues? No, 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 no. 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 Well, no. what's rhythm? Exactly. Well, rhythm. I mean, I know what rhythm is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me about rhythm, pal. I got it in spades. But well, you know what I'm saying? But it, like, well, it's like the, the adding swing. You know, there, there's country and western. Country is is very dried, and western yeah. is where kind of the I, I I I believe I have this right. It's kind of where the the backing comes in, and where the swing and the movement comes yeah. into it. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. You know, okay. It's like R and B. You know. Right. Yeah. Rhythm and blues. Otherwise, right. it's just blues. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Hey, guys, All right. This is a blues riff and B. Um, watch me for the changes and try and keep up. <laughs> I love the Blues Brothers. Is that the Blues Brothers? That's Marty McFly inventing rock and roll. All right, well, guys, I really want to talk to you today about um, about uh, Chris Burden. Chris Burton? Burden. Burden. Yeah, like it's a burden uh, on me okay. to deal yes. with you on a daily basis. Great. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You know I love you. Come on. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. But Chris Burden, good. <laughs> Chris Burden is, uh, I mean, probably most well known, uh, you know, for for now for doing the the lampposts outside the LACMA. Okay, yeah, that's Chris Burden. Oh, I think I know. I'll keep going. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Chris Burden is um, he, he he led up to that uh, sort of thing where it was it was sculptures and stuff like that, and he would do these installations. Um, and a lot of times it would be kind of, everything was sort of about power, you know? And I'm kind of going to do this profile a little bit backwards. going to do it backwards. So you're going to start with the light post outside LACMA, which is the default picture of mm -hmm. every girl on every dating app. Yes, that's right. 
And yeah. we're going to go backwards to sort sort of. Yeah, I'm going to kind of go back there, but like that's the stuff he did that is to me it's still interesting um but like but it's like he would do these things of like a hanging installation of miniatures of every submarine in the world. So you'd be like China's got this many, the US has this. If you would walk into by, by quantity so you could right. see in a room in right. miniature form Okay, here's all the yeah, you, here's all the submarines in the world. Yeah, this is this is what that looks like. Right, right. I, I you like know, that. I like things like that. Yeah, and then there was other like sculptures that were like um, small again miniatures, like where it'd be like, this is what I think 25th century a metropolis is going to be like. Uh -huh. So it's like we're kind of he he was his, his he thought we were going to go back to kind of like a feudal state system. Hmm. He's not wrong. Yeah. And uh, so there, there, that's at the LACMA too, right? And that's uh, that's called I think Metropolis Two or something. Oh, he built that with the, the there's a there's all these cars that that flow through it, and then right. there's, there's 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 lights for the morning and the night, and then right, yeah, and there's like a there's like a kind of a, a, a garden jungle thing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, um, you guys don't take me anywhere nice. <laughs> well, it's not like we're going to the LACMA behind your back. <laughs> no, I know you guys went fucking with that. I mean, that's fine, but like, I, I, I can get art too, okay? But where, where he, he then he, he would also do the same kind of thing with tanks too. There'd be like a whole thing of, here's just miniature tanks. Here's all that shit, right? Yeah. But where he starts his career is in like severe performance art. And borderline um high level prankishness okay right so he would do things like in 19 in 1971 i think he did his first um like big 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 piece and he grew up he grew up to the son of an engineer and um um a scientist and he was he was uh born in boston but he he lived abroad for a long time italy and stuff like that and he got badly badly hurt in his foot in like a motor scooter accident as a child and while he was like having this very long healing process he got very into visual art and like especially photography and stuff like that so that's like what led him to kind of grow up into like a a young artist and his main early things were very very shocking um his possibly most famous one is 1971 which is shoot which is he has his friend stand 15 feet from him with a 22 rifle and shoots him in the arm. Yeah. And he gets shot in the arm by his friend while they're rolling like uh, like a sound recorder mm -hmm. and a eight millimeter, uh, you know, film recorder. Yeah. And so it's just, you know, 10 seconds long. You see this dude Get stand shot. over here. This dude walks over here and is like, you ready? Yep. Yeah. And he goes, and he was really just supposed to nick him on the side of the arm, but he actually went too far in. So there's a hole in the front and a hole in the back of his arm. Oh my God. And he was saying like, shit, it's, <laughs> he's like, it was disgusting. He's like, there was a smoking hole in my arm. And he's like, but I was saying like, we have, you know, we got Vietnam going on right now. Right. And he's like, and this is America. And he's like, what's more American than getting shot? You know? Yeah. Well, the, the more American thing is uh, I ignoring what the bullet does. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. So right. I think what he's doing is yeah. like, do you know what bullets do to bodies? Yeah, right. yeah we, we definitely love guns, uh, but I don't know how much we love. Uh, we're aware of what bullets do. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and you see him do this, like, fast little trot forward. I mean, because, like, keep in mind, this is a guy who's as ready to get shot as anybody ever is. Yeah. <laughs> so so he's standing there, and, you know, and it's just like, bang, and then it's just like this quick little trot forward and, like, kind of like a like a ghost to hold his arm. But, like, he's not, it doesn't pass out or anything else like that. Yeah. But, you know, he gets shot in the fucking arm. Jesus. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's your tomato can. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, uh, it, it also part of the point was, it's like, it was about, because Vietnam was going on, it was about following orders. You're going to go over there and shoot me. Huh. And mm -hmm. it, the piece is called Shoot. Right. You know? So it was like like playing with all these kinds of ideas. Later on, he does a thing called Through the Night Softly. He's stripped down to his underwear, and he has his hands bound behind his back. This is 1973. And he's forced to basically sliver along the ground through broken glass he's forced to or he forces himself he forces himself to basically by how he sets up yeah the 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 room it's a it's a it was um it was like an installation 
Yeah, that's the thing is that like this guy was into doing things that like were d d d there's nothing here to sell, pal. Right. Andy Warhol can't buy this. Right. We're not doing that. Right. Cuz we're cuz this is this One time only. Cuz we actually is... got shit to say. Right. This And is... even the film is for everybody. So it's like it's so it's so like still it's 1973. Think about what's going on. It's like Weather Underground and the fucking, you know, Panthers and yeah. all that shit and again like, you know, Vietnam, Watergate, blah blah blah. blah. So it's like it's this whole thing of forcing you to be very, very, very uncomfortable and showing you horrific violence. Yeah. And again, like we've talked about in other things, like how you would see it in horror movies. You would be forced to confront right. violence or you would or you would want to. Right. You would want to see it. And that's what he would play around with, which I love so much, you know. And, and, and so Through the Night Softly was also shot on film? That was also shot on film. Um... 1974 is maybe his most famous piece ever where <laughs> he had himself crucified to the top of a Volkswagen Beetle <laughs> with nails through his hands. Not his feet, but through his hands. So he's crucified to the back of a Volkswagen W Beetle, which is in a garage. Uh -huh. And he went looking, he, w he was with people and he'd be looking at the parts of his hands and, and, and feeling pushing on 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 his palms and being like this, this is where this is where we should do it right right this is where it'll it'll fuck me up the least right you know Jesus. and he gets he gets these nails pounded into his hands and he the deal is the Volkswagen backs out of the garage with this dude shirtless you know he's got pants on Chris Burden artist <laughs> <laughs> I am Chris. <laughs> and he comes, he gets, you know, he just backs out, and the 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 engine starts revving a bunch of times, and that's supposed to symbolize screaming in pain. And then it's just back in the garage, over. That was it. And it's called transfixed, right? And the idea was there was that like trans through something we, like society needs to be fixed but also you're transfixed by this the spectacle sure. that sort of thing um so that was a really big one but then through throughout this whole time he was very interested in in uh in television right well i can see that i mean the vietnam brought the war and sure yeah into sure it. sure yeah and also it swayed it, public opinion mm -hmm. yeah and you know it was also still the heyday of um uh, television as an escape too mm -hmm. right you know and he he was like i i want everybody to see i i want to get on t tv i want to get on tv so he's like how can i do it i'll buy ads so he buys <laughs> ads right on TV. And this is when there was five, There's 13 five, channels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like CBS. But, you know, you had to go through your local affiliates, right? So right. at first it, would, it was just Los Angeles. But then later on, it was fucking during Saturday Night Live. Hello, Des Moines. In, in yeah. New York. Like, you know, like he had a, during the morning shows, like whenever there was high traffic areas, but all he could afford was 10 seconds. Right. <laughs> but that was like... That's all, a lot of time. W w w with him? Yeah. <laughs> all a, he needs to do is open the garage door. <laughs> you know, exactly. Exactly. Like, so he, um, I want to play you. A 10 second commercial where five seconds is the door opening and five seconds is the, five seconds is the guy coming out crucified. And it's like, um, visit your local Volkswagen dealership <laughs> today. Reliable cars. These are the TV commercials and they start with, with just the one and... So this is in Los Angeles in 1974-ish? Early 70s. Okay. And he's only got... He's only got his tapes. And, you know... So the first thing he does is just... White background, black ink, Chris Burden. And then you just see him for 10 seconds crawling through glass naked. And that was on TV. That was so the he, sound? So he aired his art... He aired he aired him crawling naked through book, book, in underwear with his hands tied behind his back for ten seconds. So he would air these pieces that he, uh, that he that, just that one. 
Okay. Just that, that one. Okay. Right? Then after that, he's like, I'm going to get a little different. Sure. Try right? it out. <laughs> so the, the, it was, uh, that was uh, just a 10-second clip of Through the Night Softly. Uh, okay, this is like prime time. Like, what do we know? Like, the first program that it was on was like All in the Family or some shit? Yeah, it was shown every night from November 5th to December 2nd, 1973 on one of uh, Channel 9. And it bro broadcast locally in the Los Angeles area. So you just... You're watching, yeah, you're watching All in the Family, and then you... Ah! Ah! Chris Burton. And then it's, hey, Kellogg's in yeah. the morning. <laughs> so this, that's, I'm gonna, that's him going again. Can you show it to us? Oh, my God. See him crawling through that shit? Yeah. So it's just... And oh. then there's some text there. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's, that's him just writing... The next one's called uh, Poem for L.A. It was a 10-second production, but it was aired both as a 10-second uh, and a 30-second commercial. Oh, two spots. So, well, you could, you, could, you could watch it once or three times, because that's what it was. <laughs> it was 10 seconds. But, it uh, was 10 seconds. Three times. But, it, you know, if he had a little extra dough, yeah. he was going to triple down on it. <laughs> right? So, it's Chris Burden. You're going to hear his voice and his face. And this is the Poem for L.A. Right? And it's his face saying it. He's a little beardy guy, right? But he just makes this fucking mad, mad, creepy fucking poem. Aired a total of 72 times from June 23rd to 27th, 1975. Science has failed. Heat is life. Time kills. Science has failed. Science has failed. Heat is life. Heat is life. Time kills. Time kills. Science has failed. <laughs> Science has failed, dude. <laughs> Heat is life. Heat is life. What? Time kills. Time kills, homie. Jesus. Chris Burton. Chris Burton sponsored by CARP because at that time... Sponsored by... It was, a, it was an umbrella organization for artists because oh, okay. you, you could not, as an individual under U.S. law at the time, buy right. just to, you, a individual. You can't be fucking Warren Buffett and be like, what's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> Check me out. Here's my dick. You know what I mean? Yes, that, that's, that's, a, that's very good Warren Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, motherfuckers? Here's my dick. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the whole commercial. That's so he has these commercials and there's no... L logo or title you at the Chris end. Chris Burton at the beginning, mm -hmm. and that's it, and that's it. And the thing, the thing that he was doing was he was just like he was just dying to get to force himself into you know two hundred and fifty you know yeah. thousand homes in Los Angeles at the time. Everybody had to see it. Everybody had to see it. Yeah. And there's just something amazing about that. And yeah. and it, it really begs the question: Why wouldn't every artist? Well, where did he get the money? Well, sometimes it was it was you know um, grants or or loans yeah. or all types of stuff. Um, he was just the first kind of first one to figure it out that you could do that. He, or, or, you, or you should, yeah. But he, you know, he had to get a, around it because people were like, "What? Who right. are you?" Like he right. would have to kind of do a little bit of a con artistry. Right. You and know? he was enough. I mean, you know, he was enough of. Um, uh, I don't want to say visionary, but he saw. He saw that opening before anybody else. Did. Right, and, and also like, the oh, thing. Shit, I can, I can, I can. The thing was, and I don't. It doesn't have to be tied to a product. It doesn't yeah. have to be. And getting shot. Part of getting shot was also to be taken serious by the artist community because it was just like you. Nobody can say that this guy isn't down for art. Right. He got shot. Yeah. Who? How many artists are taking bullets for it? Well, now it's pretty popular, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like it's like, so you. Yeah. It was it was twofold. It was you know a, a serious yeah. piece, but right. it was also like it's easy to say that these because people would shit on performance artists. They didn't like it. They right. were like, "What? It's just what's going on? A bunch of fucking racket." Right. They're like, "Paint get, something." Yeah, paint something. Do something exactly. But I think his his motive of being like, "Well, I'm not going to do something and then have it be a commodity," is kind of yeah cooler. Give me art I can understand or don't. I mean, and but also, but also caring about you enough to sort of provoke you is a thing, right? Well, I mean, for 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 people who their concept of art is paintings and pictures, right? And he's saying, well, there's also other types of right. art, and sure. so the, the people who are fighting against it are probably like, I don't, I don't get it, yeah. Right. So because I can't conceive, of I don't how get to it. Do it. I don't means I don't like right. it, right? Yeah, right. yeah. And, and him, t like, kind of co-opting a medium, and the medium not being TV, but the medium being. TV commercial, yes, and yes, co-opting mm -hmm. that. And, and I'm talking about we're 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 selling you know best hits of the '60s 
in, on, uh, you know, on and vacuum cleaners and pr- right, products. right before that happens. Right, right before there's a man then, crawling through broken glass. Yeah, for and then and, and just the the lack of context. You Chris know, you Burton, see, you see that? Then you see him slither away later. How many families were looking by? Like, is this like a commercial for Windex or like you know what? Imagine you saw it twice. You'd be like, "What the fuck is going on? Science has failed. He's <laughs> alive. He's like, he's alive. Time, Time kills. kills. Wait, I, I mean, I, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I like this guy already. I like mm-hmm. science has failed. I like he his life. Mm-hmm. I like Time Kills. Yeah, straight up. I I just I imagine the. Because then, back then, there was one TV in the house. Yeah. And so everybody sat there watching it. So I just imagine the parents in their recliners going, what is, whoa, what, what is, this cut, what is wrong with these kids? And then they're, they're like, five, their 10-year-old kid is like, what the hell was that? Yeah, that was amazing. Was that? Did you see it? I got to see that again. What yeah. was that? Kids talking to each other about it, like on the bus. Yeah. And just you imagine? Like wait around till the next night. Yeah. And then... There's no follow up. There's no one eight hundred number to call. <laughs> right. Are you crawling through glass right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do I get in glass? <laughs> Are you a victim of crawling through glass with your hands tied? <laughs> Has anybody helped that man in the glass yet? Because I've seen him every night on TV. <laughs> What's the next season? <laughs> Don't spoil it. Oh, oh, Sorry. you talking about heat his life? <laughs> so, then the next one is. Um, the Chris Burden promo. So he looks at the results of a national survey of the American public that says who who are the top six most famous artists ever, right? And this is in 1974 or whatever? Yeah. Okay. So what, His but, name, Chris Burden, he says to the station managers, this is the name of an art business, and they agreed to sell him airtime. So this one's called the Chris Burden promo. He purchased 21 time slots on three Los Angeles stations in 1976, excuse me. And he purchased 24 time slots in New York, a very visible time, Saturday Night Live, morning news, and uh, it's aired from May 1st to 21st. Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Rembrandt, Vincent Van Gogh, Pablo Picasso, Chris Burden. <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci, just Michelangelo. social engineering. So the words, the words Rembrandt. are coming towards the yeah, screen. Yeah, it's a blue background Van Gogh. with uh, just the yellow Donald artist name. In so he says the six Chris most Burton. famous artists in the world. Twice, He's, twice he goes through the list. Says his own name at the end. What a great experiment of just like. Yeah. Uh, if uh, I just put it out there, what is it? it how, how are you going to tell me it's not true? I saw it on TV, and even not, <laughs> and even not just. I mean, was there? I didn't, I didn't see it, but maybe there was. Was there a, a title that said "most famous artist in the world," or did he nope. just we right. start? Right. So there's no. It's just association. Yes, and it's just putting it out there in the ether, and does it work? Like it's. The, it's brilliant. It is. It's, Especially for the time. But it's also so funny and satirical. You yes, know, like this, this guy has a, a brilliant sense of humor. Yes, it's you very know? funny. It's extremely funny. <laughs> but also effective. <laughs> right? Like it's, it's, it is satire in that, it, what, am I, how do I, is this for real or is it, it's like the yeah. cigarette song, right? Mm-hmm. Like, huh, what? But then also it's like, you know, it's kind of like if you get it and, and you know what he's doing, maybe you get mad. You know, like any, or you laugh, or like, you know you what I'm feel, saying. The point is, you feel something. Yeah. So then, full financial disclosure was the fourth commercial that he produced, and it was um, in conjunction with an exhibition at the uh, Silverman Gallery in Los Angeles. In the gallery, there was a series of drawings created by grouping each month's canceled bank checks together. <laughs> okay. So his. 1976 tax in- income tax returns are also displayed. So he's going through his income tax on the air okay. in a commercial. Or, or aired 30 times in Los Angeles from September 20th to October 4th, 1977 on channels 2, 4, and 7. In keeping with the bicentennial spirit, the post-Watergate mood, and the new atmosphere on Capitol Hill, I would like to be the first artist to make a full public financial disclosure. My gross income for 1976 
was seventeen thousand two hundred and ten dollars. My business expenses Text totaled with all the, sixteen thousand one hundred and fifty six dollars. And he's sitting in this front of an American with flag a net profit for nineteen seventy six of one thousand fifty four dollars. Thank you. <laughs> this message paid for by Chris. Well it's, it's paid for by the by the Baum Gallery. You know, uh, the Silverman Gallery. Yeah. But I mean just him in, in sitting at a desk in front of an American flag and then text of, you know, full financial disclosure. We got Watergate and all these yeah, scandals yeah, going on. Keeping it with that spirit. Let, let me mm -hmm. just show you what's up with me. Yeah. I made $1,000 this year. I spent most of my money on commercials <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your dad at home would be like, stop making the fucking commercials. <laughs> but that's about 10 years or so after uh, we started getting political commercials, uh, like the, the Daisy commercial, LBJ's yeah, Daisy sure. commercial. So that's, I'm guessing political commercials at that time where the candidate would sit in front of a desk with the American flag behind him and go, I'm uh, Jimmy from uh, Fuckstick and uh, you should vote for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's... It's um and it's so to the point. Yeah, yeah, and then just brief and over, and then like whatever, what, whatever you think, you know. Oh, God, it's really great. But he does. He does, and this is the guy. Just so everybody remembers, he's the guy who did the light post <laughs> installation <laughs> up front of LACMA. Yes, that is now everyone's profile picture. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> But now, so also, around that... He uh, shot himself! <laughs> the other things that he did that were leading up to that, that were interesting, leading up to the lamppost and, and the sculpture time, which is, you know, his, his, his older years. He died in 2005. Can he got... Cancer. Oh. Yeah. In Topanga. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He survived being shot, crucified. Yeah, he couldn't beat the valley. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Topanga Canyon is a nice place to die. Yeah, no, of course, but he um, he was a, he he taught at a university here for a very long time. But there was a scandal that he had to resign over because a student showed up with a loaded gun. That was kind of they thought him trying to outburden burden. No, and he it was it was like a scandal going on, so he resigned, and he was like, "No, you should have suspended that student." And but anyway, I'm resigning. So. So do we know the answer? Was it a real? Was it a prank? It, they think it was artistically inspired, but it wasn't at a time when you could bring a school to gun anymore or gun to school anymore and have it be super chill. Right, not like it is now. No. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, but it was, was ahead it, of the time. It was. It was <laughs> later. No, it was later times that it happened. That's what I'm saying. It was at a time where there was already school shootings going on in America. This is like his later life. Oh, okay. Where did he teach? He taught at. Let me bring it up here. He was a university professor there for a very long time, too. I, like, I mean, this is really how, I guess, he kind of paid his bills after, like, 1978. Yeah. You know? Um, and then he would just do, you know, art was a spare time thing, which I, I guess is sort of how, like, some of these bigger artists really make it, right? Yeah. Because especially if you're him and there's nothing to sell, what are you going to do except teach art? Well, what was in the gallery? Right. So he would sell those to the gallery. You know, so th those those would be sold, I guess. Because right, like the commercial wouldn't be in the gallery, but what did he? Ha what were his? What was his medium of for galleries? Then? Well, that's the thing is that later in life he would go to sculpture mm -hmm. with with the with the things I told you about mm -hmm. already. Yeah. You but then there's those. this great right. in between time, and this this in between time is my favorite. So it's okay. it's completely shocking, um, performance art with nothing to sell. Right. One of the things he did in, in the shocking time is he went on a TV station to be interviewed and suddenly him and his cronies take the station hostage and then he goes in the editing room and eats the film. <laughs> so the medium was rumor. Word of mouth. There was no evidence of this happening. So he's working on a oh different plane. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm gonna do something. Uh-huh. And then I'm gonna destroy the evidence of it. Yes. Like the that was- The medium is rumor. The medium is rumor. The medium is word of mouth. Did you hear what Chris did? No way. No way. Yeah. Did, yeah. He, and then he, ate, he ate the shit. He ate the fucking film. He ate the fucking film like he's Red Dragon. <laughs> yeah. For real. Like, it was like, I mean, he was really doing crazy stuff. But then, you know, things get more mechanical, and don't forget, you know, one of his parents is an engineer and stuff like that. So, he 
again shooting back to the more to the 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 later times he would do things like i'm going to create this gigantic mechanism that every time the turnstile gets turned on you entering this museum this machine pushes like a quarter of an inch against the museum walls so if enough people walk in here the roof is coming down and killing us all <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite. <laughs> I love this guy. Isn't this? In, I mean, like, this is the shit he would do, and like, yeah. and like, a lot of it is like, how bad do you want to see it? Yeah, do you of, like art? A sense of humor, but also with this thing of like, <laughs> yo, man, like, shit is real. Crazy shit happens. Right, and you know, how long does art stay art if you commodify it so much? Mm -hmm. One of his pieces is like that too, where it's this six thousand ton flywheel, right, and it's. It's, Yo, this wheels fly. It's there's a there's a, a a strong bracketing system, of course, attached to the the center of the wheel, like the spokes, you uh -huh. know. But to keep it grounded, so it's elevated, but it's six thousand fucking pounds. Right. It's it's gigantic, and everything's you know bolted to the floor and shit like that. But there's this piece where twice a day, they back up a motorcycle to it, and they. They start revving the motorcycle, which goes forward. The back wheel of the motorcycle goes forward, but it's rubbing up against this gigantic 6,000-pound wheel, which then starts spinning backwards. Uh -huh. And the kinetic propulsion of this thing would keep it spinning for two hours. Okay. Right? Okay. So you're just walking into a room, and there's just a giant wheel spinning. There's just a wheel spinning, and you don't know fucking why, because the motorcycle's long since turned off. It only ran for two minutes. And if, it, if it's going for two hours, that fucks with you a little bit, because you're like, is it... Slowing, I, I can't tell if it's slowing down. I think it's slowing right. down. But not only that, but he was like in love with the idea of like, you know, if this thing comes loose, it'll smash through <laughs> several buildings. Yeah. He's like, it was like, it was about creating a monster and but controlling it, but also being like, wait, what the fuck is going on? Like right, at any time. And it, he was comparing it to nuclear energy. Exactly. I knew it. It's yeah. Brilliant. It's yeah. Brilliant. Like this is here. We don't. You but, don't understand. But I'm that. not. I'm not easy with it. Right. I don't like it. Yeah. Um. But it's again that thing of like his whole all of his shit is just like you know some fucking crazy shit might happen right here. Right. Until like the very end when he's just doing straight kind of sculpture stuff. But even then, it's still stuff about power. It's like here's the world submarines. It's all this shit about power. Mm -hmm. Um. But the later stuff, um, in 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 his in his kind of like shocking career before he gets into making the flywheel and kind of bridging the gap. Um, to more of his like physical structured work um, is really my favorite. Before I get to that, though, I do want to say the other thing that he did that was a massive structure, again, from his engineering, you know, parent background, which is incredible that he did, is um, the flying steamroller. So it's... It's a wrestling move. It's a, it's a, like a crane type device. And on one end is just a giant cement block. And the other end is attached to the top of a steamroller that has cables attached to it. So they just get this steamroller running in circles so that it starts spinning. Oh, fuck. Right? And it's going as, as fast as a steamroller can go. <laughs> right? And is it outdoors? It's out, outside. Like out, like in what you would like build a, you know, uh, an empty lot you would have a skyscraper built on. Right, okay. Like something that size. Massive. Yeah. Gigantic. Like where the fuck he was getting the money for that shit, I have no idea. Yeah. But then it's a guy, so it's the guy, and then he, you know, because of the balance of the structure and everything, this steamroller gets air. So the guy is standing on the steamroller, and you hear it. Like, it stops making noise because it's not on the ground anymore. And it was just showing you the ridiculousness of elevating something as stupid and heavy as a steamroller that it can, and making it fly, because yeah. it's... It's a device also meant to ground you down. Right. Right? Even those things can... Right. So that way. was kind of the purpose of that. Right? But it's also just funny. Uh, yeah, it is it's funny. Fu I mean, you see this guy standing on the steamroller, and he's like, <laughs> it's like two feet off the ground. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you know? But the final thing I want to say about Chris, which is um, uh, that I really, really love, is he started doing stuff where there was a piece, there was like a thing... <laughs> There was a thing where they were like, we're going to take pieces of art from the most, you know, classic artists of all time. And we're going to display them alongside the works of our best modern, 
you know, so it'd be like Rembrandt, like, Michelangelo. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So it'd Chris be like Burden. it'd be like a fucking Rembrandt painting. And then what's Chris Burden gonna do? So he just he just has like a burlap sack with himself stapled against the wall. <laughs> he's just like you know what I mean? Like he's like pinned up. Like, like, so we're, uh, you're looking at a Rembrandt painting, yeah. but also right next to there is Chris Burden in a sack. <laughs> just hung from the wall. I am Chris. And he, he, you, you wouldn't know, you couldn't see him or anything, you know? Oh, he just, he's, he's not just, even visible? No, he's not even, no, no, you can't see him or anything. He's just rustling around. That yeah. sack's like alive. <laughs> no, he would do these things. Like like, well, one of his earliest pieces was getting crammed in the fetal position and stuffed in a locker for five days. <laughs> five days. And so people were like, "This guy shits on David Blaine, dude." He so people would just like, because you he goes in there and he's not telling anybody anything. So people eventually are just like slipping a straw through for him to have water. You know what I mean? Uh, and then he's like, he's like just you know shitting or doing whatever he's got to yeah. do in there. So, I mean, he would do a lot of stuff like that. <laughs> One of the pieces he did, he's he's behind. A pane of glass um, with a hammer and everybody's just in there to look at it and it's he's got a clock that starts the time of the piece and he just lays behind this this pane of glass which is like kind of tilted against the wall and he's underneath it so you can see him in this one hmm. and He's lying down there, and again, nobody's told what the fuck is going on. Right. Nobody knows, it's right? A, it's an experiment here at this point. So you're just in there, and this one was kind of controversial at the time because <laughs> it scared the fuck out of people, right? Because he just lies there, and then somebody at the museum is like, all right, well, he's been here for days. <laughs> you know? And they just, like, place a, like a, a jug of water you know, within, like, reaching distance. And in his mind, he knows what he's going to do, which is, at, at, at any point that there's interference, I'm going to smash this glass, and then I'm going to smash the clock with the hammer. And then he just walks out. That's his plan. That's the, that's the plan, but nobody knew that was the plan. Right. So basically, the whole thing was about daring you to save him. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was it was the same kind of thing where it's like, and you know, the clock it serves as a uh, mem mem like it. it it's how here's long it here's how long it's up. Right. Well, right. You, will you? Well, it reminds me of the the experiment where it's like, will you shock this stranger? Yes, right. yes, and it's exactly. Like, well, we're in a museum. I can't save this man. He's right. uh, this. He's this is art. This, this is art. Process. I, it's not like I can't ask him right. if he's okay because right. that's against the rules. So a lot of the stuff he's doing is just always like about provocation and and like. And about getting you involved, and that's why I love him so much. But it also has like this pranky, humory nature to it. Yeah. Um, the funniest thing he ever fucking did, in my opinion, was he did another one of these fucking things where he's in a glass cage. You know, he's in a cage. <laughs> he's in a glass waves. cage. You know, <laughs> suspended from the ceiling. But <laughs> he's got the glass cage rigged up with tons of microphones. <laughs> And then, like, distortion pedals, right? Which are then connected to amps, which are, like, cranked. <laughs> right? <laughs> and they're all behind, like, where you come into the room where he is. <laughs> so, so people just idly walking <laughs> through the museum, walk through the door, and then, like, oh, what's going on in here? And then, like, they look, and they're looking around, they don't see anything until they see a man in the corner of the ceiling suspended in glass. <laughs> and then, he's like, get the fuck <laughs> screaming, <laughs> and it's amplified like behind their backs yeah. by the like it's insanely loud and distorted. Get the fuck out of here! What are you doing? Come you on, know? Margaret, it's art. We must go. <laughs> right, and so people would run, high, flee the fucking place. He's a genius, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but yeah, so like uh, I don't know. I, I just I, I'm, I've always been in love with him. He was a person I wanted to do on profiles from the beginning yeah. because he's so so fascinating, and I just think it's like. It's just, I was like, wow, what a maniac. And then when I thought about his time, I was like, oh, it's really not that crazy. Like, everybody was being pretty extra <laughs> around sure. Vietnam. Like, it was a time to do something pretty fucking insane, you know? Yeah, every, everything was insane at that point, but it's, I, I think it still doesn't, it doesn't cheapen it.
Mm, yeah, no, make sure no. you know a taxi driver was out. Oh no 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 no! I think it, I, I it's mean still I think revolutionary. I'm, y- it yeah. is yeah, absolutely. I'm not even saying that it's 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 dumb or or or, or not you know worth you know it, like I don't think it was just. But it do- I think what you're saying is that it do- it makes sense that it was the 70s that he was doing this. Yeah, it was the same thing. You know, I said I don't know when I said it, but like you know the the gimme shelter thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it feels like the world is ending and yeah. everybody's starting a fucking liberation group and yeah. everybody's at war and the crime is going through the fucking roof like yeah. we talked about on the Killing of America Patreon. Check out the Killing of America episode on Patreon if you haven't already. Yeah, so it's all of those things combining and I just love that you know, there, there was an artist that was not being narcissistic and was like, what are you going to do? Like, this is really about you. This is not really about me. But also, uh, I'm trapped but in also, locker. But also, <laughs> but also, but also shit. right, yeah. But also, hi, I'm Chris. <laughs> well, I, Rembrandt. <laughs> Michelangelo. Chris. Chris. Pablo Picasso. <laughs> Chris Burden. I, I, you know, I think the, uh, some of that, it's like... Uh, for a lot of people, I'm thinking about today, you know, and today there's probably 20 guys a day on YouTube who will be like getting shot for 10,000 views or whatever. Right, Jackass was not too short, you know, Jackass happened. Yeah, right. for and, sure. And in essence, Jackass is like, you know, kind of like a... a, a Proto-YouTube. A, yeah. And what he's doing, especially the TV stuff, is here's a medium where you can reach everybody now. Right. Yes. And so it's, if you can pay to have a commercial, that's YouTube back yeah, then. Yeah, right. And I keep and, but, think, with, but with a captive audience. But with a, right. yeah, and who doesn't know it's YouTube. Right, right. They think it, everything, for them, everything on TV is legitimate. Yeah. Yeah, well, with the first one where he's crawling through the broken glass, he said, he was like, I just love the idea of them seeing it and knowing something was wrong. Yeah. I just yeah. putting them... Like yeah, in an I'm uneasy com- way, uh-huh. and just like that's the that's the whole thing is is th- things things aren't okay. You know, all in the family will not save you. Right. You know, <laughs> and, like, he, and you know, and all in the family was transgressive itself at the time, but mm-hmm. not as transgressive as this ten second commercial. <laughs> Man in glass. Yeah, just feeling. You know, just being made to feel like things are heavy, things are fucked up, and we need to we need to be. Science has failed. He just Science, he he just time, life, kills. Kills. time kills. Yeah, time kills. Science, science has failed. I, 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 he just life. Time, time kills. I, I, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> well, I, I keep thinking back to Warhol, and it's mm-hmm. like, so Warhol's big thing was a Campbell's soup can and Marilyn Monroe with four different shades of color, mm-hmm. right. which is like the poppiest pop you can yeah. get. Yeah, and he's going well. I can have that audience, but I can tell them to go fuck themselves, basically. Right. It's mm-hmm. just like, what if I was... Here's pop destruction. Right. That's interesting. I guess I'd never really thought about that. I thought he was embracing it and saying, like, well, no. But that's what... I mean, he's embracing the destruction of it. Because what did Warhol's... Campbell's painting do? It probably put Campbell's sales through the roof. Sure. Yeah. And he's saying, I'm selling broken glass and human misery to you. Right. He, on his, uh, on, it's a booming on industry already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just... It's interesting to me, though, that it's it was trying to point out things being so wrong because at the time also... I think I've told you this before. My boss was telling me... He's like, back in the day, he's like, for hours it would be just footage of the bodies coming home. Yeah. yeah. On they, on TV, then they change. That's why they don't the do rules. that. Anymore. Yeah, that's why they don't do that anymore. But it's, so it's like it, in in that way, it didn't need as much because you knew. Because I mean, you're watching bodies come off planes. Yeah. I mean, they're not all fucking poped out or anything getting dragged out. Of the <laughs> <laughs> they're not all, you know, you're not fishing out of the river. Yeah, you don't got to fish them, fish their ghastly skeleton out of the river. There's no soundtrack. What the bodies? <laughs> the the, right. The... Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like it was like. You know, it was just like somber, and somebody's probably narrating it. But well, it's, it's a theme song to Mash. Suicide is painless. It's <laughs> right, right. Like it was like, you know, some reporter being like, "Okay, well, that's 133 or something." Yeah. I don't know what they did. Steve, I don't know if they just had silence and showed it coming home. But my my boss that was alive at the time was telling me he's like hours. Hello, doctor. Hours. Hours every day. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking insane. 
Science has failed, dude. Dude, Sorry. science has failed, homie. He does life. I mean, and then, so, <laughs> then, so, you, so you're seeing all of these bodies, and then you're like, oh, thank God, all the family's on. I can right. Yeah, yeah, finally, a yeah. break from all the human. Oh! <laughs> I mean, I guess that I guess that is his point. Um, I guess that's his point. But it does. It might not be. I mean, so much of all of these installations in this this different type of art, this three dimensional art, type, all of this stuff is like. I, the part of the point is what's the point, right? Right. And and we can say, well, here's what he really meant by. It. But at the end of the day, it, what re- all of it really means is whatever we take from it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And he, so he could be like, I just wanted to have a guy in glass. But if that means something else to us, then that means something else to us. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't shy about saying what certain things meant to him. Um, like he did say, he's like, I do want to put people ill at ease. By seeing this commercial, right for sure, I like the idea of that. Yeah, um, and even the other ones that are like satirical still make you feel like, oh, what's what's that? Oh, what was that? A joke tax report? Who? <laughs> how? How? <laughs> who's think. doing that and why? I want to do that. You know, <laughs> that's a great. Commercial. <laughs> Sitting in front of a gigantic American flag. Here's what I made this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in keeping with the spirit and it's a, of the and you know, you know, yeah, and the what, to do. Watergate. Yeah, <laughs> and then you know. For people at home, if you can see that, you can see all the commercials on YouTube. Um, he kind of looks like the tried out guy. <laughs> he he does. He looks, a little, he looks a little haggard. Um, but it says it has listed all of his expenses, like art supplies yeah. and what he was paying, all that shit. It's just very, very strange. Um, but the, the, uh, the Pablo Picasso, I mean, very. Chris Burden promo, so fucking funny. So it's funny, brilliant. It's a weird, it's a weird psyop. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, just uh, I'm gonna put, some, I'm just gonna throw it out there and see if it all just through weird social alchemy takes hold. And the, yeah. and again with the rumor that like, the the medium is rumor. Yeah, blowing my mind. It's, the, yeah, that one. Uh, yeah, just completely insane. I really love that one. Did I, he get in trouble with the police for? It's like, I think, kind of a friendly reporter. Uh-huh. And then it was like one of those things where it was like, oh, no, this is a piece. And then you're like, oh, I'm part of it. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, right. oh, it was, it, was just, <laughs> it was just a gun to my head for art. No, there wasn't any guns. No, or I get, any, I get there wasn't it. any guns or anything like that. But it was like, it was just like a couple of people like suddenly taking control of the studio. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I mean, they're still destroying the fucking station's film. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's still pretty fucked up. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah, I guess he got away with it. So, good he's for an, him. He's an artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, I mean, he did, I guess in his day, he, he had a lot of, of um, he had some clout, you know. I yeah. think getting shot helps. It's yeah. Right out of the gate, huh? Yeah. yeah, and then getting crucified. So that was the thing, is like putting his body through all this shit, life, life and then tying, <laughs> tying that back to his foot injury as a kid is interesting, too, to me. Was that, like, he learned to love art while his body was healing. Uh huh. As a child. Yeah. And then after that, he's like very willing to sacrifice his body for art. Mm-hmm. I think that's super interesting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, the, and then the, as I, I, like, I love the idea of old punks. Mm-hmm. This is very much, it sounded very much punk art. Yes. But then <clears throat> as punks age, the culture passes them by, mm-hmm. and they're, they, their punk is not punk anymore. Sure. Because that has been imbued into the culture. All right. mm-hmm. And so now he's an older man, he's just like, well, I'll just make some sculptures of lights now. I guess it's that's like, pretty punk. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think all those things still have a lot of merit and good ideas, because um, especially when you follow like where his mind is gone, and you see it as like the end of a story, or mm-hmm. like, so, like what he has to say. Yeah. You know? And he was saying, he's like, you know, you know, when you're an artist, your favorite piece is the one you're doing. Right. You know, he's like, I don't look back on my art and think about like, oh, this is my favorite or anything else like that. He's like, you know, you're, you always just are kind of like marching forward with more of what you have to say, you know? Do you think there is still some as yet un, unannounced or unrealized message behind the lamp post installation like um, like is he was he like you know buried in there or, <laughs> or like you know his 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 plan all along uh, you know is there something about it that is a final act i think it's just that he was he was in that mode of coupling things together to be like do you ever think about it's like that thing of um you know when you go outside and like you're on a train or something you're like who the fuck are all these people 
Uh-huh. Like, oh, they're just there all the time, and I never see them. I think that's what he was talking about. And like I that. think I think he thought about that, and I think he... I've got the sense he knew that would be the place people took pictures. That's mm-hmm. what that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Mm-hmm. Did he know that it would become this kind of meme? Right. I mean, it's it's iconic. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And it's dumb. Yes, it is dumb. And it's it's been this this gigantic installation has become reduced to like a, I'm gonna say it again, but like a dating profile picture. Yeah, it's on every Tinder profile. Yep. I wonder if you if know. You're in many... LA. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Des Moines. Uh, yeah. Leonardo. Michelangelo. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Raphael. But yeah, like how many how many Tinder profiles have those pictures? Right. <laughs> they all. They have burden. They don't yeah. have Da Vinci. Exactly. Who whose image is more reproduced right now? In, right. Currently. Yeah. You know, just in terms of like, um, just you know, gross quantity. It's mm-hmm. it's interesting to think about. This yeah. guy's. I like this guy a lot. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I mean, Burden is like, you can kind of go deeper and deeper and deeper with him. I'm going to. So it's like, we kind of could return to him at another point to, to talk yeah. about some some more stuff, maybe on a Patreon episode. Sure. Uh, are, are you the guys bur- are you guys going to do a Patreon episode today? The Burden of Being Burden. Yes. <laughs> the Enormous Burden of Being Burden. Yes. Yeah. Title drop. <laughs> uh, because I have some stuff to tell you about. I'm going to tease it on this. Why don't you tease it, and we'll do it for the Patreon patrons. Yes. I'm going to be talking to you about this guy dating a horse. I'm in. Uh, All right. <laughs> nice. This guy's dating a horse. Caligula um, wanted to make his horse a member yeah, that's of right. uh, something, right? The Senate. Yeah. The Senate. No, he did. That's right. Yes. He was, he was a good senator, though. He, yeah. He was a good horse. And then he <laughs> had all the other senators' wives work in a brothel. Did you know that? Uh... uh I did not know that. That was, he really, uh, he wasn't too pleased with the Senate. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, I know how he feels. Hey. So. <laughs> All right, so I think that's it for us. Yeah. John? Uh, John? Yes. That was great. That was great. I'm glad you liked it, Aaron. I thought you would enjoy that. I, I'm surprised I've never told you about Chris you, before. You've mentioned, um, you've mentioned it, but I have, you know, I don't remember anything you say well his tinder profile is five pictures of lights <laughs> i'm not even in the mine is a guy crucified on a beat <laughs> i'm gonna go on tinder and i'm gonna take a picture in front of the lights chris, no chris burton crucified and, and any girl i match with with that picture of the lights mm-hmm. i'm like hey i love chris burton yeah, too yeah, yeah. instant hell yeah That's hell cool. yeah so funny. Yeah. I love this guy. I love you, and I love you. No, I love you, too. Um, I think, uh, yeah. So, guys, uh, subscribe to Patreon if you want more of this bullshit. We're going to be talking <laughs> about uh, horse banging. Yeah. And um, also... And it's not Mr. Hands, right? It's not Mr. Hands. It's not that guy who fucked that car. No. Was okay. there a guy who fucked a car? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll talk about it on the Patreon. <laughs> All right. Uh, everybody, I love you. My name is John Fahey. My name is... Aaron Pita. I'm Ebrazo. 